Welcome to Design Your Destiny, your podcast for tapping into the power of your subconscious mind. In this next few minutes, allow me to show you how to tap into that power so that you can create success with ease, form deeper connections, and have greater presence in your relationships, and most importantly, find peace within yourself. My name is Penny Chason, and I'm your host. Hey, it's Penny, and it is episode 88 of the Design Your Destiny podcast. Yes! So anyway, um, my energy is up today. The new moon is tomorrow. I've had some big shifts in the last couple of weeks that, um, you know, really have impacted me positively. And here's the reality of it. This is episode 88, and I'm going to go woo on you because it impacts everything I do. My spiritual practices impact everything I do. Now, as I sit here and I say this to you, disclaimer, I'm not perfect. Disclaimer, I'm still learning. Disclaimer, I will be learning for the rest of my life. But here is the one thing that I know for sure. And that is that we are all energy and everything is energy. Like you can probably hear it in my voice. Like today, my energy is in this just really bubbly, I have so much inside of me that wants to come out, so much that I want to say, but after I record this episode, I'm actually stopping for the day because my physical body will get tired, even though my mental energy, my consciousness wants to keep going. So that would come across. So I'll be stopping uh, after this episode, but I'm just going to riff here a little bit and say that there was a time when I thought spirituality or being spiritual was new age, and it was just a bunch of woo-woo stuff, ladies in flowing skirts and crystals and all the things, and I know people who wear flowing skirts, and I have crystals. (laughs) I don't wear the flowing skirts, but I have crystals. But I thought it was something that was relatively new, and I really... Before I left Mississippi and I went to New England, my model of reality, my way of thinking would have been that people with crystals and talking about spirituality, I would have boxed that into the paradigm of what I learned in church, even though there has always, always, always been a part of me who has questioned the degree to which man's interpretation and man's desire for rules and man's desire for control has influenced the teachings in the Bible. So I'm, you know, I mean, even though I call myself a spiritual person, you could call me Christian because I I believe in the teachings of Christ. We're you know, here to do our best to not be judgmental, to have faith, to take action, to watch our words, all things that you hear me talk about, right? But a long time ago, if, you know, you had talked to me about crystals and things, I'd have been like, ooh, that's witchcraft, you know, because I was uneducated. And when I learned about Reiki, when I was in anesthesia, and I won't go into that whole story, I've I've gone into it before, But once I learned about Reiki and I started reading about healing touch, energy healing, those kinds of things, I got exposed to this world of New Age spirituality. Well, I I didn't do a whole lot with it then, but I found it interesting and intriguing. Once I went into hypnosis, I really learned about the power of the mind and the impact of our words. And my very first hypnosis instructor, Ron Esslinger, introduced me to, um, I'm going to butcher his name, so I'm not going to say it. It was a Japanese researcher who took, they took photographs of water structures, water crystals, that had been exposed to music or to words 
and uh, the title of the book is The Effect of Words on Water. I will get the book, the author's title, we'll link it in the show notes. But basically, our words have frequency. They have vibration. And the music or the words that the water was exposed to influenced the way that the molecules of water bound together to form crystalline structures. And they photograph that. And it's actually pretty uh, freaking amazing. The instructor, Ron Esslinger, told us that when his son was in high school, he did a science project. And his science project was going back to the effect of words on water. And he had four plants. And he labeled the water bottles that had the water that he watered the plants with. And it was like love, hate, thank you, and I forget what the other one was. Anyway, take a guess as to which plant thrived. It was a plant that was watered with the bottle of water that had the word love written on it. So you can go on YouTube and you can find any number of videos and experiments that people have done demonstrating this. Now, are all of them probably going to be truthful and accurate? Probably not. But there are some that when you look into them, they were created long before we had all the, you know, special effects and green screens and stuff like that that were available to everyday people the way that they are now. So learn about the effect of words on water. And then when I started diving into this concept that we're all energy, I really got to thinking about that. And from a purely scientific perspective, Every molecule in our body is made up of atoms. Every atom has at its center proton, neutron, that is surrounded by electrons, one or more. The electrons are the negative charge. The proton is the positive charge. And the electron spins around the atom. And it creates an energy field. As electrons spin around, protons and neutrons, they create almost like a magnetic pull from the electricity. This is how atoms bind together. They don't fit together like pieces in a puzzle. They're electrically attracted to one another. So your entire body from head to toe, from the tip of your hair to the tip of your toenail, you are one giant ball of vibrating electricity. Every bit of you. So when we have emotions, when we're thinking positive and negative, that chemical state affects the rate at which we we vibrate. So when I began my, you know, spiritual path, there were a lot of things that I heard that I was like, wait a minute, I know this, like somewhere deep inside of me, I know this, and I have known this. It's just, it rings so true. There's no doubt. There's no questioning. But I've learned a lot of things on this path, some of which I will share with clients if they're open to it, and I feel that it's appropriate. I follow my intuition really big. I follow my intuition. But here are some of the tools I'm going to share with you that I sometimes share with clients and things that I do myself. First and foremost, if you want to know where your mind and your emotions are, practice silence. Find a place and sit. No pen, no paper, no phone, no dog to pet, no music to listen to, no television. Literally sit in silence. I used to really practice my silence when I had an hour-long drive each way. I would shut everything off in the car, and I would just drive in silence. Huge difference. Makes a huge difference. Um, Now I practice anywhere from, I don't know, half hour or more of silence almost every day. Now you might be thinking, Penny, how do you fit this into your day? Because... You know, you're, you're busy. Well, you know, 
most nights I wake up somewhere between 2 and 4.30 and I am awake at least one to two hours. So I practice my silence then. It's a really good opportunity to observe my thoughts and see where they go. So if you lay down at night and you're laying there in silence, no music, no one to talk to, and your mind runs away with you, that's just a tiny window into what's really happening. So I would encourage you to spend a few hours in silence, one, two, three, four, and and really sit with yourself and see what, what comes of it. Like, how does it really feel? Because truly, if you want to get the greatest impact of a silence exercise, do it in the middle of the day. Do it during the day, in the morning or the afternoon, whether it's the weekend or the weekday. Do it then and see what's really coming up and and you will notice some things driving your thoughts and driving your behavior that will be quite surprising. So silence is one thing. The most important tool I have learned is awareness. Awareness is a very important tool. Awareness of your thoughts. Awareness of where your attention is when you're doing things as you go throughout your day. Awareness of what you believe. Awareness of energies. I mentioned When I began this episode, and it might be the draft that I deleted, it may not be this one, but anyway, you you can hear my energy and my awareness of how the moon impacts me. Tomorrow is April 1st, and tomorrow is a new moon. Or here in the U.S., it might actually be today, but I'm going off the call schedule for a group that I'm in. The moons drastically affect my energy some months. And then other months, they don't bother me at all. Sometimes the new moon makes me feel like I'm fried and on edge. And sometimes I sleep like a baby for days (laughs) on end. Uh, Sometimes it's the new moon. With this new moon, I'm feeling very creative. I am feeling very energized. I am just all about bringing people in to facilitate change in their life. So awareness of energy and how it impacts me. Awareness of solar flares. Solar flares also (laughs) impact my energy. And you're probably thinking, damn, you're just crazy. Like you're just kind of like picking at things to explain your moods. No, no, (laughs) I'm not. And if you choose to believe something else, then that's okay. I I can respect that. I I can respect, we all have our own point of view, but typically, If I've been feeling pretty good and I'm not exhausted, I'm not run down, and I don't have any reason to truly explain why I'm feeling out of sorts, I do a few things. I'll look and see what the moon phase is. i look to see if there have been solar flares, and then I will look and see what uh, the Schumann resonance is. The Schumann resonance is the frequency of the electromagnetic field of Earth. Right now, the Earth's poles are shifting and uh, not not true north and south, but magnetic north and south. They're shifting. And every so many thousands of years, the poles actually flip. And they've been predicting that we're due for a flip. Who who knows? I, I don't concern myself with that. I'm just aware that it affects me. So if I'm going through my day and I feel like I can't really get my feet on the ground, I don't feel solid, I kind of feel on edge, you know, it's the same physical feelings that someone might feel if they're having anxiety, except that I'm, there's not, I, I'm sitting here going, you know, it's like when this would begin, I'd be like, my God, why do I feel so anxious? I'm not afraid of anything. There's nothing. What's causing me to feel this way? And then when I became aware, I realized, oh, what I'm feeling today, this isn't anxiety. This isn't fear. This isn't anger. This isn't frustration. And I would check my Schumann Resonance app. And sure enough, the energetic fields would be disrupted. And that can happen from solar flares as well as things going on within Mother Earth, earthquakes, volcanoes, Who knows? Like, that's all energy. And when these things happen, they shift the energy of the earth. So when I have those days, you can actually go on YouTube 
and you can find what's called Schumann frequencies. And some of it's music with the frequencies underneath. Some of it's pure frequency. I don't like pure frequency. I like the ones with the music. And if I'm feeling really, um, <laughs> the word that came into my mind was helter-skelter. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> when I'm feeling really helter-skelter, <laughs> and no, my life is not a horror movie. When I'm feeling really helter-skelter, I have my um, speaker. You can't see it. I have my speaker here. And I will put Schumann Resonance on my phone and have it playing over Bluetooth. And I turn the volume down really low and my clients can't even hear it. So if I'm working with clients, they can't hear it. And I'll share a story with you. My assistant, she's a young mother. And I believe in helping women, empowering women to... Um, be able to support themselves, support their families. So some days she brings the kids into the office. And this was last, I don't know, August, I think. And um, her three-year-old, oh my, he was just like, he was having a moment. Like it was a meltdown day for like no reason. I came in here and I put on Schumann frequencies and psh, he just settled right down. He just settled right down. Sometimes if I have a headache with no explanation, I can put on Schumann frequencies and my headache goes away. So sometimes I'll do that before I even take Motrin or, or anything like that. Okay, so let's see. I told you this was going to be a riff and a ramble. This is going to be a long episode. All right, so I told you about silence. I told you about awareness. Awareness is so key. And being aware of how other people's moods, how other people's behaviors impact you, and being aware of when you can set some boundaries around that, because that's that's helpful as well. So awareness, 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 awareness. I do my best to follow what brings me joy and makes me happy. I like to do what feels good. And... Um, I think I mentioned in the episode on human design, which I think was episode 83, uh, where I did my human design with Andrea, that over the last year, like last year, you know, I was, you know, I was hoping by the end of the year to be in a growth phase of my business. And I was just getting so frustrated and, and things weren't happening the way I wanted them to happen. And what I had done was taking a look at my business is like, okay, 2020 was a great year. And I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do. My business coach tells me, and I have more than one business coach, um, there, you know, it's like, okay, if you want to grow your business, you need to focus on this, you need to do this. And like one thing each quarter, like map out one thing. And that's the one thing you focus on that quarter. And at one point, she even told me, she said, you're selling too many things because, you know, I train people. I also like to do hypnosis workshops. Uh, I like to do my one-on-one -on -one work. And, you know, I keep experimenting with group program. I actually have a group program that just started by the time this airs. It's called Ignite that will allow me to help more people. And when I did the human design reading, that's all wrong for me. My human design is like, I like to have, I, I depending on how I'm feeling, I like to be able to jump from thing to thing, which is why it's so important for me to have an integrator because she is keeping things on track. And it's like, okay, we do need to get this one thing done here. I need this from you. And I'm like, okay, as soon as I'm feeling it and see, she's only been with me four months now. She's freaking amazing. But She's going to learn that like when it comes to some things, it's like, okay, when I'm feeling it, it'll get done. Because remember, I talked about everything being energy. If, and I've noticed this, I, I had a recent podcast episode that I did and it had already been submitted and, and processed and uploaded, or I genuinely would pull um, that episode, but the episode was very forced. Like I was under a deadline 
It had to be done. I wasn't in the mood to do it. And you mark my words, you're going to know exactly which episode I'm talking about. It's been a recent episode. And I'm just going to leave that there for you because I want you to tune into your awareness and to listen. You, you will feel the energy in that episode and know that it was forced. And that's not a good energy for me. That's not the energy people turn up to see from me. And so using that awareness as I move, continue to move forward in business and navigate different things is key. Now, let's see. <laughs> Somebody's probably going to um, ask about the crystals. Like, what, what, about, what about crystals? I have crystals um, that are just meant to amplify energy. And then I have crystals like this one, if you're watching the video, not listening to the audio, I have a selenite sphere. And it just sits here on my desk. Selenite is believed to absorb negativity. I work with a lot of clients um, who are processing a lot of emotion. And it's this is where awareness also comes back in. It's very important that I don't absorb that energy and take that energy on as mine. It's important that I can be compassionately detached. I can be a compassionate, objective observer of what my clients are experiencing should they become emotional. Because if I get emotional, then I'm going to begin to project my own stuff on them. And that's not what people pay me for. They pay me to be non-judgmental, to be present with them, and to help them drop this stuff and leave it behind so they can move on with their life feeling freaking phenomenal. Like that's what I get. That's what I get paid to do. People don't pay me to dredge up their stuff. They pay me to feel freaking phenomenal when we're done. Okay. So um, I'm going a little Joe Pesci on you there. So yeah, so I have a few crystals that are specifically for absorbing that negative energy. And more than anything, it is a reminder when I look at it, it's a reminder for where is my attention when I'm working with a client to be present, to listen, and to not absorb and take on their emotions. Because I'm sure I probably qualify as empathic, but there are people who are really empathic who cannot distinguish their own emotions from somebody else's. If somebody else gets emotional, they are really going to get emotional and you're going to laugh at me. My nose is being tickled like crazy right now. And um, that's usually a sign that what I'm saying is on the right path. So if, if you happen to be someone who is empathic, first of all, you really, and this wasn't where this episode was supposed to go, except now I know this is where how, where I'm supposed to wrap this episode up. If you're highly empathic and you find that you walk into a room and you're picking up on people's emotions, the first thing you're going to want to do, and you know, it's funny because all of the spiritual wisdom, it's, it's actually ancient. It's not about spirituality. It's ancient principles for just living your fullest life. First and foremost, if you're empathic, set your intention. If you're going into a group setting, whether it's on Zoom, a room full of people, the grocery store, wherever, set your intention that you're going to maintain your awareness around the emotions and energy that's yours and keep it separate from other people. And allow yourself to practice seeing other people's emotions Imagine that you're in a movie, watching them on a movie screen, that you're truly separate from that. You can be compassionate, you can be understanding, and you can be in a, a detached, objective observer without getting into their feelings. Because when you get into their feelings, you activate and set off your own nervous system in that response. So awareness and using your intention are key in that process. In terms of other um, spiritual things, I, I really tap into my intuition. I follow my sense, like just talking about the impact. That was just, I followed my sense. 
I was meant to share that. The way that I'm able to tap into my tuition and use my sense is because I practice my awareness and I use my awareness to stop my monkey mind and to stay out of overthinking. Silence allows you to see what's running underneath the surface so you can use your awareness to pay attention to when that's happening and stop it. When you can stop all of that analytical chatter that happens in your mind and you go into your awareness of what your body is feeling, you can tune into your intuition. You can tune into your sense and you can become more aware of what's going on in the world around you and realize just how unique uh, that you are. So that's how I use those tools in my life and as I'm helping other people. And that by no means is this list um, exhaustive. Okay. So anyway, episode 88, 88, it's a spiritual number. Um, I'm going to leave it to you to go look it up and see what it means. And maybe we'll put a link to that too. So this was a fun episode for me. This is a very fun. We're not talking about business and mindset and all of those things. And who knows if you really liked this episode leave me a review on iTunes. Let me know what you love most about it and maybe I'll do more like this. All right, bye now. Thank you for listening today. If you've enjoyed this episode of Design Your Destiny, I would appreciate it if you would head over to iTunes and leave a positive review. When you leave a positive review, it's like podcast currency and we can increase our reach and get the message to even more people that they, just like you, have the ability to design their destiny. And remember, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform.